So the paper I'm using is a watercolor paper. Uh, this one is Fabiano Artistico uh, hot press. Um, just putting the, but it's a butterfly. I mean, it's not very complicated to draw. So I'm just going, drawing directly onto it. It doesn't really matter what kind of pencil you're using. I think this is like probably the cheapest one I have. I don't even know what it is. So just get your, your pattern from the butterfly. It doesn't have to be perfect. None of this is perfect by any means. I'm probably my third time using um, ink tents. I am not a brush person. Uh, I tend to use uh, colored pencils mostly in any of the artwork I make. I did this one specifically for practice um, to try to learn uh, some of the brush work. I, I, feel, I feel very clumsy with the paintbrush. I, I much more prefer the very fine point control I can get with pencils and colored pencils. That's why I chose mainly to do this, actually not mainly, completely with with the ink tense blocks as opposed to combining it with the ink tense pencils as well. I suppose I should explain what ink tense is. Ink tense is a water soluble uh, ink. Uh, it comes in two forms, pencils, uh, like a traditional colored pencil or more like a watercolor pencil, I guess. They're activated by water. Um, you can lay down the pencils directly onto the paper if you like, uh, wet it with a wet brush uh, to activate the colors. Once the colors are activated and dry, they are permanent. They don't lift, they don't smudge. Um, but again, I chose to do this completely with the ink tense blocks. The blocks are basically comprised of the same thing as the ink tense pencil core, except they're a solid stick. I just use the sticks basically the same way as anyone would use um, like watercolor pans or anything. I just get the colors I need, wet them with uh, a wet brush directly onto the sticks. And well, thank you, Leo. My dog's sneezing behind me. This is just masking off the white spots on the butterfly. Regular Windsor Newton masking fluid, nothing special, no special technique. Now one of the things I wanted to do was keep the background blurry and loose. So I'm treating the background a lot like a like watercolor, I guess. Um, I wet the paper first so, so the colors can run and blend in together. I end up not really liking this technique. Um, but again, lack of experience. I don't know what I'm doing. Now, one of the good things with ink tents is its versatility. You can thin it way down with water and get a very transparent looking uh, layer like I'm doing here. I think I got too much water here in this case, but you can also uh, use much less water and much more of the product and get a very paint-like, um, opaque uh, layer instead of what I'm doing here. Experimenting, practice, and mistakes. That's how we all learn. You can see here where, the, where I've wet the paper uh, in the background, but not the butterfly's wings itself, where the water and the color pretty much stops right at that boundary. And I'm just throwing in some of the darker colors for the darker areas of the leaves. 
and doing a lot of it off camera it appears. Sorry about the glare from the wet paper, my lighting. Eh, I'll have to deal with that at some point. Now you can notice how the uh, colors when they start to dry lighten significantly. We'll go back over that with several more layers. Each layer will get darker and more vibrant um, as we apply them. And this shows a big difference between using ink tents versus watercolor where if this were watercolor you really wouldn't want to be putting these dark colors down. You usually go with watercolor, you usually go from your lighter colors and shades to your darker ones. But here I can put the black down um, and paint over it with the lighter colors and they'll just go right over it without any smearing or smudging once it's dry. You can't do that while it's still wet like this because you will get smudging. And this is again the first layer. It's gonna get very dark as I add more layers on top of it. Now the brush I'm using is a, wa a watercolor brush. Um, it's a silver black velvet um, number, I don't know, six or nine. I, depends which way you hold it. I don't really know. But I think it is a six, because I have a 12 and it seems to be half the size of the 12. Now obviously here I seem to be missing a little bit of footage for the first layer on the, on the, with the orange on the butterfly and some of the background. I seem to have forgotten to hit the record button. Also notice how much darker the black gets on this second layer. It's still not going to be anywhere near as black as I want it, but you can, you can see as you add layers onto it, um, each layer is going to get more saturated, in this case black. The yellows and oranges on the butterfly's wings and even the greens in the backgrounds will also brighten up with each subsequent layer that I put down. Leo, stop breathing into the microphone. My apologies, my dog seems to want to be in on this. Now obviously this footage is sped up. Um, I am nowhere near as fast as it looks. This, this whole piece took me, I think I had six hours of footage for this that I ramped up, even even missing a big chunk or two. So don't, don't think this is uh, at all indicative of how fast I can render this.
here's the second coat of uh, some of the lighter yellows on the the bottom two wings on on the butterfly are a little bit lighter color actually quite a bit lighter they're more yellowy uh, than they are on the top with ink tents you can just go right over each color uh, changing the color a little bit uh, I, I mix in kind of a yellow and orange um, on the palette before I'm putting it down and then uh, trying to blend it up a little bit kind of in a, with a wet brush um, getting it up there it's it's obviously increasing the saturation it will lighten as it dries I can always go over it with another layer and I will And because I'm putting these on fairly transparently, you can even sort of optically mix the colors on the paper where the, the color from the previous layer will shine through a little bit from the layer that you're putting on. Now here's some of that orange, I want to say tangerine, I can't remember the exact name of the color. And this color goes primarily on those two upper wings. I can even, while it's still wet on those bottom colors, I'm blending a little bit of that orange into the yellow. Now I'm starting with some of the background flowers that the butterfly's sitting on. Um, again, going very light, very watery mixture, blending with water, just kind of to get the shapes down so I don't lose them. I did like this brush. Um, one thing about it, I, th I think it's called a round brush. It tapers to a really fine point. And when you just use the very tip of that brush, you can get a really, really fine line with it. And again, on the background here, I, I slightly wet the paper first, not as much as I did before. I, I kind of overdid it on the first part, just to get those colors to blend and, and fade out. Now I can glaze some uh, lighter colors up over some of these leaves. If I had to do this again, which I'm sure I, I'll do, I'll you know I'll be playing with this stuff more. I think I'm gonna. I think I would treat it less like a watercolor. I think that was my failing on the background here. Way too wet. Way too much water. I could have. I think I'd have better served myself if I'd have gone with a stronger mixture of ink tents instead of water, and painted more opaquely. Here I'm removing some of that masking fluid. Um, you can see how white now that those spots are. Here's another mistake I made. I probably should have waited to take that masking fluid off because 
I know the black on the wings isn't black enough that I'm going to have to go over it a couple more times. I really don't know what I was thinking taking that off so early. I've also become a little less tentative with the black. Now see, it's a stronger mixture and much more opaque. Again, it's going over black, so it's going to look darker, and it still will dry lighter. Um, but man, I wish I would have gone a little stronger with the color to begin with. And my goal on this again was to get some practice with paint brushes and yeah I'm getting it now because painting around all those little white dots is uh, a bit of a challenge. Here's a little real-time action, darkening the background a little bit. You can see how slow I really am. Again, notice how dark this color is as I'm putting it down as it's wet. Kind of scary at first, but it's gonna it's kind of the color I want the end result to be, but I know in my head that it's gonna significantly lighten as it dries and you'll see that as the as the video progresses now we didn't use many colors to do this i think i used like three greens a couple yellows and oranges and this magenta color i think i used indigo blue and some charcoal colors for the blacks i didn't take advantage of the fact that the white color in the ink tets blocks is very opaque. I could have, I could have painted these flowers much easier, I think, if I'd gone over some of the lighter colors after putting down the purple with um, some of that white. Just about wrapping it up. I put this aside for a while, and as I typically do, went back the next day, tweaked it a little bit with some more black. I forgot to record that. Anyway, if you managed to make it to the end of this without falling asleep and listening to me stammer, please subscribe. I do primarily colored pencil work um, as my main medium. I'd like to learn more painting, um, acrylic, oil, uh, watercolor. Uh, if that's something that you're interested, uh, you can watch me uh, make some attempts at these and maybe learn something along the way.